This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and welcome to this edition of Destined for Victory. I'm your speaker and host, Pastor Paul Shepard, and I'm glad you've joined me because I believe you're going to receive fresh insight into God's Word. Listen, do me a favor, call someone who needs a word from the Lord and tell them to log on to praisedc.com, click Praise on Demand, then Pastor Shepherd. Before we get into the broadcast, let me quickly mention that you can hear these messages 24 hours a day on demand simply by visiting my website, pastorpaul.net. On the website, you'll also find a number of resources that are sure to be a blessing to you or to someone you know. Better yet, why not download our free app? Just go to the App Store on your smart device and search Destined for Victory or PastorPaul.net. I'll share more at the conclusion of the broadcast, but right now, let's get into this message entitled, For Lovers Only. Listen and be blessed. If you want to be blessed, live by the great commandment to love him with all. Don't withhold with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. When you do that, certain questions go away, like, will I go to church today? That goes away. I love him with all my heart. This is the place where I gather publicly to worship him. I love him. I love my leisure time. My flesh would want to have all of its weekend to do what it wants. My flesh would love that, to have two whole days to just do exactly what the flesh wants. But my spirit loves God with all of my heart, with all of my soul, and with all of my mind. And so I choose, I will not be a person who says, Lord, you know I love you, but I don't feel like going to your house and worshiping you publicly, and I don't feel like hanging out with your people, and I don't feel like hearing the word and past the priest too long anyway. And so not today, I love you, but it takes that away because if you love him with all your heart, there's no but afterwards. I love you, Lord, and I'll see you at church. I love you, Lord, and I'm going to give to the kingdom because where my treasure is, there my heart is also. I'm going to give generously. It's not a fleshly function. The flesh says, can you afford to give? Look at all the bills you have, which you made because of your flesh. So it takes away stingy giving. It just does. Because I love him with all my heart. And my giving is a reflection of my love according to what Jesus said. Where my money is, that's where my heart is. And so things like that just go away. Will I give some time to help other people to serve in a ministry? That's no longer a question. It's, Lord, how do you want to use me? Because you've given me all of these hours, some to work to make a living, but some to live to make a life. And part of making a life is serving other people and helping other people in the name of the Lord. So certain things go away. So the challenge is to love God. Think back. There are some of you who are totally your first generation Christian in your family, but probably more of us than not are second or third or fourth or fifth generation, meaning people before you, they modeled this. They loved God. Your grandparents loved God. They were going to church in the story. They were going to raise you in the word in the story. And folks, we got to get back to loving God. We can't have this newfangled version of religion that is at our convenience. Because if you convenience yourself, you're displeasing God. He says, I command you to love me. And here's what I want to show you in the remaining time. For those of us who will obey the command to love him, you will find that the command is not a stringent thing we have to do and we get no benefit. Just the opposite. He says, if you love me, I got some great things I'll do for you. That's what I love about God. He doesn't say love me and you getting nothing out the deal. Now he's God. And if God said love me and you're getting nothing out the deal because he's God, I'm going to still love him because I got to meet him in the end. If he's going to be our judge, then do it. But here's the goodness of God. He says, now that I've commanded you to love me, let me show you what you get. Let me show you the benefits package that I give to everybody who loves me. 
There's lots in the benefits package. I can't speak to it all. Let me just give you three points of the benefits package. First, he says, I'll make everything that happens to you work out for good. He'll make it all good. He said in Romans 8, 28, through the Apostle Paul, we know that in all things, God works for the good, not of everybody, but of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. I'll bet you never thought that that didn't apply to everybody. Some of y'all didn't, but today you get the revelation. That doesn't apply to everybody, which means all these folk walk around, well, you know, everything happens for a reason. You ever heard that? That's not biblical. Bible didn't say everything happens for a reason. If you don't love him, stuff just happens. There's no reason. There's no rhyme. There's no pattern. But he says, part of the benefits package of people who love me in their lives, I'll take everything that happens. Good things, bad things, fortunate things, unfortunate things, job promotion, pink slip, perfect health, got a bad report from the doctor. You see what I'm saying? Prosperity, poverty. God says, if you love me, I'll take everything that happens, your successes, your failures, the things you did right, the things you did wrong, the best decisions you ever made, the worst decisions you ever made. Come on. Everybody in the room has both types of things. All of us, there's nobody here who says, well, Romans 8, 28 doesn't apply to me because everything I do turns to gold. <laughs> nobody. Everything I've done is right. All my decisions have been smart, wise. You know, I was just taught to live a responsible life. <laughs> you are so out of touch with reality. The reality is all of us need Romans 8.28, and it applies to those of us who love the Lord. Those of us who love the Lord, we can say, I know God's going to work this out for good. No matter what it is, I know he's going to work it out. And I know I'm telling the truth. That's not just a declaration of faith. That is a fact because God promised it in his word through the apostle Paul that he would make everything work out for good. God said, I'll be the ultimate GPS. I'll get you to your destiny. Now, you know what a GPS does. It knows where you are. And once you put in the destination address, it knows where you want to go. And it will give you the best route from where you are to where you're supposed to go. But how many like me have ever driven to a place you've never been to, didn't know how to get there on your own, and you put in the destination and started driving, but along the way, you stop paying attention to the directions and you stop looking at the map that's on the screen. Anybody but me ever done that? I need some honesty. Anybody ever? Okay. A few honest people and a whole bunch of liars. Okay. You know what happened, you who have actually had it happen. Like I did. In my case, I was listening to my music, getting into my music, love my music, got to have my music. I buy my car based on, can I navigate through my iPod on the screen? That is a must for my car. A friend of mine is trying to get me to buy a really nice car right now. I said, no can do because it doesn't have iPod integration. He said, you can Bluetooth. I said, no, because then I would have to manually set things on that. I can't do that. I need to be able to drive and just touch the screen and get the song I want. <laughs> iPod integration is a must. If God ever says, I want you to trust me and get a car without it, that's going to be a grave day for me. <laughs> Hope he never demands my iPod from me. My life is in my iPod. <laughs> anyway, I was enjoying my music, and I'm sure the lady, because her job is to get me from where I started 
to where I'm destined to be. I'm sure that lady was still talking and I'm sure the map was showing where I was supposed to turn, but not paying attention, I zipped past something. And at a certain point, I guess my good song was ending or whatever, and I realized I haven't heard that lady say anything. <laughs> and that made me look down at the screen and I saw the word recalculating, which means I had blown some instruction. I had not made a turn I was supposed to make, but she was letting the system recalculate, which meant you are somewhere you should not be, but I'm still committed to getting you to your destination where you should be. So I'm going to take where you aren't supposed to be and make it work out and I'll still get you from here to there. God says, if you love me, that's what I'll do in your life every day. I'll do it in your life every day. When you do right, when you're prayed up, fasted up, when you're loving me, when your mind's on the word, when you've been in the scriptures, when you're treating people right, he said, I'll get you to your destination. But not only that, if you have one of those off days where you acting like you're on crack, <laughs> making dumb decisions all in your flesh, telling people off and everything else, when you repent, you will see that I'm recalculating. You will see that I say, I'm still going to bless you. I'm still going to get you to the place of your destination. He says that he'll make it all good. The second thing he says in the benefits package to people who will live by the great commandment is he'll blow your mind. First Corinthians chapter two. Look at what verse nine says. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. No mind has conceived what God has prepared, not for everybody, for those who love him. If you live by the great commandment from this day forward, God says, I'll make it all good. And secondly, he says, I'll blow your mind. He'll blow your mind. What's that mean? There are things that you haven't seen. There are things you haven't heard. There are things that have not even entered your mind. And God said, because you love me, I have prepared them for you. They're sitting over here prepared. Preacher friend of mine said he had decided one day to buy a really expensive, I think it was a watch for his youngest son. He said, I'm thinking ahead and I'm thinking that uh, at one point I want to honor the fact that this is the Omega of our family. This is the last. And I want to I want to just commemorate that and I want to honor that. And I bought something especially with my last born. Many times the firstborn gets all the special treats and the goods and all that. He said, but in my case, I knew what I was going to do for my older kids, but this was my last one. This is my baby boy. He said, I bought something really expensive when he was very young. He said, and he had no idea. He said, there were times when I see him playing and he had no idea he was playing near a very expensive gift that I had prepared for him. He said, all I have to do is wait for the appointed time, the, the age, I forget what age he decided, I'm going to present it to him and I'm going to tell him, I bought this years ago with you in mind, but at that point in your life, you weren't ready for it. But all you had to do was keep on growing up, keep on learning the things that I was going to teach you. And the day was going to come when opportunity was going to intersect with my purpose, and I was going to bless you with what I had gotten for you. Listen, God says that about you. There are some things I have prepared for you, things you haven't seen, things you haven't heard, things that haven't even entered your mind. He said, but I have prepared it for you, and when the day, when the time is right, I'm going to give it to you. I'm here to tell you, God knows how to blow your mind. See, you think God can do what you ask, but I'm here to tell you, God can do way more than you ask. God can do way more than you think. God can do way more than you've seen somebody else blessed with. He says, there are times when my will will call for me to just flat out blow your mind. 
Anybody already had a taste of some ways that God has blown your mind and taken you places you never thought you would go and, and blessed you to see things you never thought you would see? Some of us already have a foretaste, and I'm here to tell you there's still more coming. You haven't seen everything. God's not through blessing you. There's still some more coming. I know I got some more coming. He's blessed me in some wonderful ministry opportunities. I found myself one day preaching in the Crystal Cathedral. I have preached in the Crystal Cathedral. Didn't break in. I was invited. I was invited. Preaching in the Crystal Cathedral. And I didn't even know that my brand of preaching would be accepted there. So it was something, never something I had ever thought of doing because, you know, I preached the word and, and I had heard some things where some critics had said, you know, if you really are a preacher of the word, you'll never get in there. And I just assumed that was true. But one day the invitation came and my staff said, Dr. Schuler, uh, his people have invited you to come speak at the cathedral. I said, y'all play way too much. <laughs> so what's wrong with y'all? Y'all always playing. Oh, no, no, I'm serious. I said, I did. Dr. Shuler doesn't know me. Yes, he does. Y'all both spoke at a conference together. And then I recalled, yeah, he was a speaker, but we had two different sessions. And they went on to say, he sat through your session and he told his aide, we have to have him come speak at our effective ministry institute. And so go get him and put him on the program. And so I sent word. I said, can I preach like my style? Because I didn't want to be a disappointment. And he said, no, no, God doesn't want you to come and, and do anything like it. He said, just be yourself. I said, oh, I can do that. I went down there, tore that cathedral up. <laughs> Blew my mind. I preached in great pulpits. If I started calling the names of pastors, I preached in their pulpits. Y'all would think I'm stuck up, but I know who I am. I'm not stuck up. I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed. And it's still happening today. Invitations coming, opportunities, doors opening, favor granted. Didn't, I thought I was done on the radio. I'm back on the radio preaching around the world. Oh, God knows how to blow your mind. He knows how to blow your mind. He knows how to do more than you can ask or think or imagine. You need to love God because he's got some stuff prepared, but it's only prepared for you who love him with all your heart. He's got it set aside. You don't even know what's sitting over there. That's why I don't hate on anybody because what's for you is for you. I said, what's for you is for you. Quit hating on other people. Quit getting mad when you see them blessed with something you wish you had. Uh-uh, learn how to get excited for them so that you can stay prepared for what God has in store for you. Don't mess up your attitude getting mad at other people. Celebrate whatever is good in their life because it doesn't take anything away from you. I hate to see people getting mad because somebody else is blessed. That makes no sense. So they're blessed. They got more money than you got. Praise God for them. Single people, they married somebody you would have wished would have looked your way. Send them a congratulations and celebrate it. Don't get mad at people. Somebody else cuter than you. Say, like, girl, you look good. They got to tear your face all up. They see all that. No, you think she all that. That's why you're looking all strange. And you're not as cute as her. You can't tear your face up like that. It's not going to go well. Just celebrate her. Brothers, don't get mad because he got pecs and stuff and you can't see your belt for your gut. Don't get mad. Compliment the pecs, brother. Man, look at you. Got them little shirts that just a little tight thing. Just, you know, go ahead, bro. I see you. Don't get mad. Because if you love God, there's some stuff for you that nobody else can get but you. 
it's reserved for you. Got your name on it. And you got some stuff coming. Even if you're going through a valley of the shadow of death, if you love him, you still got stuff coming. Some of y'all in the valley right now. But read up on what David said. He said, even though I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear evil because God is with me in the valley. His rod and his staff going to comfort me and protect me in the valley. And then I found out that he's got a place prepared for me. I told you it's prepared. Prepared for me. And when I get to the table prepared for me, my enemies, all my haters, all my doubters are going to be standing around and they will see that the valley wasn't where I was going to end up. And my enemies will witness God preparing a table before me. If you're in a valley, you got a table coming if you love the Lord. I said, if you love him, you got a table. It's prepared. You ever made an advanced reservation at a restaurant? I don't care how crowded it is. When you get there with your party, y'all going in because it's prepared. My table is sitting there. God said, if you love me, I don't care where you are now. Don't worry about where you are now. That's not where you're going to end up. I'm in the valley, but there's a table prepared. And when you see your enemies gathering, don't say, oh, Lord, they're getting ready to attack me again. Could be that you're close to your table because you can't get your table till your enemies show up. So when you see your enemies all milling around, you say, oh, Lord, where my table? My table must be around here. Prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. He'll blow your mind. God is going to work everything out for good. And then he's going to blow your mind. Last thing I'll mention as I wrap up the series, if you love him, he has a crown of life waiting for you. James chapter one, verse 12. It says, blessed is the person who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised not to everybody. You know, you got these folks think everybody going to heaven. We got Christians now deciding everybody going to heaven. What Bible you read? Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Heaven is prepared for those who love him, who gave him their lives, who said, I'm not going to live in sin. I'm not going to live displeasing you. Why would he force you to spend eternity with him when you didn't want to please him in 70 or 80 years on earth? God not going to make you live with him. You didn't like him on earth. He's not going to make you spend eternity with him in heaven. But for those who love him, he's going to bless us to stand the tests that we have to go through. And when it's over, he's got us something prepared for us. Oh, I'm glad that there's something prepared. There's a heaven prepared. See, the old saints taught me to love hymns. And that's why I told y'all recently, we're going to sing some hymns. I know these newfangled folk don't appreciate hymns, but I'm going to force feed them. Because every now and then you need to learn you some good old hymns. And they had hymns about going to heaven that I sung from the time I was a boy. And they would make you learn the glories, not only of where we were, but where we were going. And you'd hear them sing some glad morning when this life is over, I'm going to fly away. To a land on God's celestial shore, I'm going to fly away. They sing, I have a home prepared where the saints abide, just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side, just over in the glory land. Some, they sing, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. The victory. I know y'all want to live now and get as much time here as you want. That's fine. Oh, that's good. Fight the best fight you can. Stay here long as you can. But just know that you're checking out of here. You're going to check out of here. But the good news is we know we got somewhere to go. For Paul said, when this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, we have another building. One not made with hands. That's eternal in the heavens. You get these little aches and pains here, but when we get over there, No more sickness, no more trouble, no more disease, 
No more things working your nerves, murders and crime and, and all of that nonsense. No more you got to look both ways before you get out your car and check and see your environment. When we get over there, it'll be nothing but the glory of God. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to loving him so much so that he makes all things good in my life. He blows my mind. And one of these old days, he'll give me a crown of life. Well, I hope you were blessed and helped by the word you received today. Now, this message is entitled, For Lovers Only. You can hear this message, as well as our weekday broadcast, 24 hours a day, online at pastorpaul.net. And as I said earlier, you can also download our app onto your smart device. Just go to your app store, search Destined for Victory or pastorpaul.net, and you'll have easy access to all of our broadcasts. Before we go, let me say thank you to those of you who make these broadcasts possible by your faithful prayers and generous support. You're the lifeline of this ministry, and we're grateful to God for you. And for all who get in touch with us with your gift of any amount this month, feel free to request a copy of my latest booklet entitled, Don't Put a Period Where God Puts a Comma. In this booklet, I explain that we all go through difficult things, but God sees to it that negative things don't define us and they don't write the last chapter of our story. This resource will encourage you again and again as you remind yourself of God's promises in your life. Request a copy when you donate this month. Our mailing address is Destined for Victory, P.O. Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. Once again, that's Destined for Victory, P.O. Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. Or you can call us toll free at 855-339-5500. That's 855-339-5500. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Well, thanks for joining us today. I hope you'll tune in next time and invite someone you know to tune in as well. Most of all, remember that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In Christ, you are destined for victory.